Hi, we are back. I'm live from Miami and I'm going to be dialing in with Peace Height. Now for real, I believe the connection is good and I'll be able to connect with all the way to Ghana. Hi everybody in Ghana. If you're watching, I'm sure you're watching because I'm going to be speaking to one of your most loved influential person. Um, Peace Hyde, which I'm really excited about talking to and have a conversation. This is a first of many of social awards talks that I'll be hosting. I'll try to do one every single month, lead to the social awards, which will be host next year, 2022, in Prague on May 24th and 25th. I will be one of your hosts alongside somebody else special, which we will share and review very soon. And um, I really want to connect with all these incredible people that have been part of social awards in the past, have received awards for their incredible work that they do and the impact that they have on their social channels. So today to launch this, I'm going to be speak to Peace Hyde. Uh, she's one of my first talks. And I, I'm really excited about Peace. She is really, as I said before, incredible. Here she is live. Peace, can you hear me? Hi. I can hear I, you. Oh, you look so beautiful. So do you. I'm like, how does she do this with no eyelashes, no makeup? I mean, it's unfair. I <laughs> like, it was so sweet. You know, it like, is morning here. I was, um, I had to be quick. So, but you look beautiful. I need help. I need those lashes. I no. love your lashes. I mean, you seriously, seriously don't. No, um, no, 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 I do, we all do. But you look beautiful, look at you already. You know, Peace, I kind of brought you in early. I really wanted to first, I'm gonna give you the intro that you deserve. You are, you are, you know, I've watched a lot of your talks and videos. Not only you are, I mean, smart, educated, beautiful, I mean, so well-spoken, but also you're so real and kind and humble. And you have this power to really connect with people, which is really beautiful. And, and you know, it's something that you can't really always teach. You know, it's something people have innate and you have that, you have that power. I mean, you were a teacher, you were teaching kids and that takes a lot of patience and a lot of incredible power. I mean, I love kids love my kids and as we all know during COVID you know we all had to be not just parents but also teachers and I have to say that's something it's not my strength I enjoyed it for the minute but I'm very grateful for teachers um, you know for the work they do because it is an art and something I I have a lot of patience but not for that I don't know how to do that um, but yeah I need to talk about also the other incredible things that you have done um, I mean, you've been, you're on the list of UN, the most influential Africans, I mean, two times in a row. You are, I mean, I need to, I need to read it because there's so many incredible achievements. I don't want to leave anything behind because no, I think, you, you know, you deserve this. This is like, these are all your achievements. And, you know, I feel like we all have to be reminded sometimes of our incredible achievements because we, we, we just keep focusing on, you know, going and f creating and we don't always look back what we have done. You, um, you have a, I mean, original series coming on Netflix. Yes, really exciting. How about. exciting. Is it I, coming this year, next year? Uh, the beginning of next year, 2022. Um, we're really, really excited about it. It's, it's um, definitely a huge deal to everyone, the team that was involved all the amazing cast members. Um, yeah, it's a really big moment for us all. And I'm really excited for the world to see how exceptional um, this cast and incredible team um, have been able to achieve um, such a brilliant opportunity to show Africa in a beautiful way. So I'm excited, super excited. Um, Can you give, tell us little hints? Like you say the incredible cast, obviously you are one of the cast, like who else will be there? I mean, oh, maybe you can tell us. Tell I'm us some juiciness. Members. Um, so I really truly believe that um, it's important to celebrate people. Um, and in my work that I've done in the African continent in media, I came across so many exceptional 
African creatives. And um, the really the idea of um, Young, Famous and African, which is the Netflix unscripted original, is really just to push um, excellent creatives and show the rest of the world that although there are some accurate perceptions of Africa which show our ancestors and show our rich culture, there's a new generation of Africa that has emerged and they are young, they are upwardly mobile, they're cosmopolitan, they're sexy, they're exciting, they're fashionable, they're extremely intelligent. Um, a lot of them are people that I've worked with, like Swanky Jerry. He's the best stylist in Africa, and he is the most beautiful human being alive. Um, another lady is Kanye Mbau. She is the biggest actress and media personality in South Africa. We have an incredibly amazing mother, wife, and um, actress, Annie Ndibia Macaulay, um, from Nigeria, and she is incredible um we have zari um the boss lady she calls herself and she is a force to be reckoned with in africa and in the business world and what we did is we put together really exemplary africans from all walks of life to come together and really show and lift the lid of what their lives are like um and i felt that this was such a great opportunity and platform to celebrate exceptional individuals from across the continent and i didn't really want to take that space i wanted some them to and they've done an exceptional job together we have an exceptional team of creatives from all over africa that have been able to come together and make this vision and a phenomenal success and so i really just hope when it airs early next year extremely early next year um that which is around the corner ex oh my god i'm sweating <laughs> <laughs> but I, I really hope that everyone sees um, the vision um, of myself, uh, my co-creator Martin Asare, one of the most intelligent, phenomenal human beings ever graced the face of this earth. Um, yeah, I just really hope that the you rest know, of- I mean, Netflix, I mean, it's an incredible, powerful platform, obviously, you know, more part with COVID, everyone's been home watching Netflix and all these incredible scripted, unscripted TV uh, things, you know, from their bedroom, TV, uh, living room. I mean, getting a show with a network like Netflix, I mean, how long did it take you guys to get this to reality? I mean, is it a year? Was it quite quick? Um, a lot of people heard about it this year, but it's actually been in the making since 2018. Uh, so yeah, it's been quite a few years now we've been at it, myself and my co-creator Martin Sare. We've both really been trying to cook this vision for a while. Um, and in terms of once we got in partnership with Netflix, it was another two years. So we were working on it for nearly two years and then they took over and we started developing it with them. Um, and it's really grown into a, a beautiful concept. Um, but I'm really excited to share it with the rest of the world and I really hope that they see the Africa that I've fallen in love with. Um, growing up in the UK and relocating a few years ago, um, I didn't really know what to expect because I didn't have a very extensive experience of Africa and especially home, which was Ghana. And honestly, from the first day I entered into the media industry, um, I have met some amazing, talented individuals in both the business world and in the media world and the like. And I just really hope that the rest of the world sees how amazing Africa is untapped market of creatives, potential, um, strong, amazing people, really. I think I keep saying amazing. <laughs> no, I, I love the passion. I mean, it's... I've been looking at your covers and stuff from a very long time. So it's this Instagram live is extremely a huge deal for me. Um, and I know my mom's going to lose it when she knows that I've spoken to you. Oh, you're so, so sweet. <laughs> Amazing, amazing. <laughs> okay, we have to do something then for your mom, something sweet and nice. Um, um, <clears throat> I mean, I don't know how you do it. I mean, you have a Netflix show, you have your, um, your talk that you do. Uh, I mean, you have a show with Forbes, Africa's Most Worst Day with Peace High, right? Where you interview all these incredible, successful African business uh, people and, and telling their stories, but not only how they got to their success, but also, you know, their failures, which is very big part of really becoming successful. Um, I also have a really good friend. Um, her name is Kim, and she actually just wrote a book about jump, right? And then how 
how sometimes we just have to jump into things, you know? And when I also look at myself, like I sometimes, I'm a perfectionist, I want things to be perfect. And, you know, <clears throat> which sometimes of course can stand in my way because not everything always is gonna be perfect. And especially at the beginnings, well, you know, you know, starting also your nonprofit organization, Aim Higher, um, that you just have to jump in and do things and you have to have some sort of a goal or a vision. Yes. Yes. Like a starting point, but then mm -hmm. you just got to do it and things will mold in a way they should, or they will inspire you to go places may, maybe where you never thought you will go. I mean, did you ever think being a teacher in London, in, in UK, then coming to Ghana, that you're going to have a Netflix show, you're going to have your nonprofit organization, you're going to be, you know, contributing Forbes uh, magazine and all these other things. I mean, creating your own brand and having almost a million, you know, followers on your Instagram and being, you know, someone that people, women, young people look up to and want to be. Um, that's, I mean, how does that feel? You, because you're really giving me like real props here, <laughs> but thank you. Well, I mean, it's the truth. It's the truth, you know? Um, like, did you ever dreamed of this or did it just kind of happen and then you embody this world, this that you are and what you do? Um, no, I think, I mean, I've always had a very big passion for media and I am a huge perfectionist, um, which sometimes cripples my ability to move forward or even act or... Um, oh, really? I'm sorry. I don't see any of the, all these achievements that, that nothing has been really holding you back. <laughs> Oh, I mean, you know, this is the thing. I think that, um, I mean, I will take it back to the whole social media gift and curse type of arrangement where um, you spend so much time sometimes looking at people's amazing lives online and we only see like a little window of the actual reality. And even myself, you know, I, I try to share, but there's very little that I can share in contrast to a 24-hour day of what my life is like. And I feel that... Um, there's so many conversations, there's so many ideas, there's so many doubts, there's so many prayers, there's so many dreams that never make it public and never see the light of day. And even Young Famous and African was a long time of me saying, look, I don't think I'm going to be able to do this. I don't think it's going to look good. I don't really think that people are going to understand what I'm trying to convey. Um, I don't know if the cast will believe in me. I don't know if the team will believe in me. Um, there's a lot of those moments where you doubt yourself, um, but you have to just decide, like you said, to just jump right in. And I feel that um, I'm surrounded by such amazing individuals and talents and bright minds that you almost have to keep going just to show that them believing in you is not a waste of energy or time, you know, and that's sometimes my biggest motivation. But I do feel that um, it is really important when you are online and you're seeing these incredible images and highlights. Um, something that I always am passionate about is no matter how great the picture is, I always try and just put a little caption that doesn't really reflect how great the, the milestone in my journey is that says, you know, this is, I did this broke. I did this trying, I did this hoping and not knowing I had a lot of insecurities, low confidence, um, doubt. I try to communicate that in these little captions, if anyone reads them, because, um, I think it's so easy to see, um, the success or the the highlight reel and think this person doesn't ever get disappointed they don't ever get a um, nose they don't ever get disappointed by family friends or um even by opportunities that you were so convinced were yours and in the final moment you just don't get it and so um i think that it's a real real blessing um i definitely feel that god has taken my dreams and kind of taken it to a level that i didn't even know was humanly possible for me and my reality but i also um really just think it's because of the team that i have around me i have some of the most inspiring incredible minds that would kill me if i ever put them on social media but they're always there holding my hand making sure that um, if I ever doubt me, they believe in me and vice versa. And I think because we've created that dynamic that I really kind of feel like I can do anything with these incredible people in my corner um, and with such amazing supporters 
that are always, you know, sending me messages and reminding me of my journeys and points that I promised myself and things like that. So I think that um, really it just, it's just about taking the small steps and the little jumps. I don't, I can't do the big jump, but I can do the little jumps and eventually it will get you somewhere where you never imagined. And I mean, even when you're reading the things that I've done, it feels very surreal for it to come out of your mouth because I'm like, is it, do you know who this lady is? <laughs> so for me, it feels like in every moment and in every experience, I, it's not by my might. And I'm really, really grateful for all the people I've been blessed with to accompany me on this journey. And I just really pray that I just don't disappoint anyone. And I just keep going from strength to strength and really portraying my, my journey, um, my continent, my country, Ghana, and more importantly, um, my mother, keeping my mother proud. <laughs> I think those are all the, the things that kind of keep me going and make me empowered to do the little jumps. That's beautiful. So speaking of your mom, she's not with you in Ghana, correct? She's in UK? She's in the UK, but I'm, I'm coming to get her so she can spend some t quality time with me because she's so busy. Um, and she works harder than I do. So, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to be picking her up soon. When is the last time you saw her? In person? Well, Live? I'm mommy's girl. So I literally will jump on the plane for like two days and go and see my mom. Just so that I can give her a hug. And so I actually saw her about a month ago. And I try to make a point of just whenever I'm doing work or business um, in the UK, I just quickly swing by, even if it's for an hour, sometimes it's for a few days. But I always try and make sure that I, I kind of stay centered with my mom, my family, um, because she's really my real motivation. I mean, she is an incredible woman and she really started with nothing and gave us everything. And I feel that it's, it's only right to kind of make her proud and um, show her that everything she did every time she believed in me it was not wasted so i try my best to to always incorporate her every journey every interview this interview she will always she's always part of it because um yeah she's the most What's powerful her name? naomi oh my goodness naomi <laughs> hi naomi if you're watching naomi you're you're inspirational and so beautiful to hear your daughter to speak so beautiful about you i mean i'm very close to my mom and my parents who just arrived to my house after two years oh, wow. not being with me. You know, I was pregnant by myself. I had a baby by myself without my mom, my dad, and my family being close to me. I'm very close to my family. So I totally understand. And, you know, I always say I contribute a lot of my success and who I am today really to my parents, the upbringing they gave me. And I also don't forget, you know, I'm the girl from Czech Republic from that small town, um, you know, just knowing that I wanted to do great things in life. And I knew I'm going to be in the world. I didn't know what it's going to be because I was maybe 13 years old when I really felt that, well, when I understood where I'm, where I want to go. Right. I, it, it wasn't, Oh, I want to, it wasn't like, Oh, I'm going to be, I want to be a teacher and I want to teach this. And I'm going to be like, I didn't have it like, so planned out and written down, but I just knew I had this feeling, I um, you know what? I'm going to be in the world. I belong to the world. I need to, um, I love where I'm, but I, I want to explore. I want to be like that bird that gets to fly and really experience. I'm curious. Um, so I've been lucky also that I have that opportunity to, to do that, but also at the same time to always come back home, you know, to my Czech Republic where I come from, eat my food, um, speak my language. Um, and 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 also yes and my culture like as as i'm sure when you left uk you grew up in the uk um i mean all your life and then as you said five five years ago you six years ago you moved to ghana i moved to ghana six years ago six years I ago um right and you you went back to your roots to really connect more to your culture and and i feel like i feel that all the time whenever i go uh, back to my country because my whole family is there. I'm, I'm the first generation. I'm the only one here by myself in the U.S. So it's really special. I really feel like as much as I love U.S. and the opportunities and the life that has given to me, when I land in my land, in my blood, you know, I do feel like so, oh my, excited. And it is very, 
it's a different feeling absolutely you know when you connect to the place where you are you come from and you have your roots you you feel those roots Yo, yeah like it's my okay this is my new home this is where my family is in the u.s and it's incredible and i love it but when i land in in, in my land it's it's definitely like the tree i feel my roots i feel grounded and it's a very spiritual um experience but speaking of my country you got to visit czech republic prague a couple of years ago when you were um nominated for the social impact and change category at the social awards which i was one of the host you were um, incredible. what did you tell me i said you were awesome that night to be honest you oh, had this thank you dress that if i lost like four times my body weight i totally would be asking you for the details you looked amazing <laughs> like you were like incredible. you can totally rock you can rock <laughs> anything you want i've seen you rock all those different outfits and and you can do it you know it's it's all about how you feel and and committing to how you feel and, and going for it right um um so what did you think of our people our country our food i mean it's very different I loved it. Um, I mean, I have to say, I'm not a, a big drinker at all, but um, I was taken to a, a sort of beer um, shop and I had your beer, which apparently is the best beer in the world. Now, I haven't had a lot of beer, but it was really nice. Um, and I actually always tell my friends um, whenever they're, you know, harping on about their Belgian beers, I'm like, look, I Prague, Prague wins the, the award in this one. So um, I, I definitely enjoyed myself when I got to see a bit of the city. Um, I did had some really nice interviews. I met some incredible people there. And I really had the opportunity to kind of um, have a period to immerse in the culture and get to know people, which I thought was really a nice um, for the social awards to give us that opportunity. Um, we got a great chance to kind of experience it. And um, it's definitely somewhere where I'm looking forward to go again. So if you need anyone to accompany you on 2022, I'll be there, darling. Don't worry. <laughs> They're listening. They're listening. Making notes. <laughs> what, so wait, when you came to the Czech Republic, obviously that's a very special trip. You were one of the nominees. Um, who did you bring on a, such a special trip? Did mom Naomi came? No, unfortunately. It was something that I literally just dropped everything and went um usually my work schedule requires me to travel a lot and i'm never really home is really my suitcase because i'm always moving around so when i heard about it i thought look it's a short trip um it's an experience of a lifetime um i get to meet some incredible people that i even follow online um let me you know take full advantage of this so i literally just dove right in and jumped on a flight i went on my own and i made a lot of friends there that from the first interaction with the organizers and with the event, I never felt like I was alone for a moment. Um, so, so the next year we have to bring Mama Naomi. She needs to. Yeah, she, she needs to come. <laughs> must. And she'll be meeting you. She'll bring her rice and jello fries. We'll and... take pictures. We'll wear nice sparkly dresses. Oh, we'll right. have more Czech beer. We'll do, do all you... of that and more. Okay, wait. speaking of the social awards, because you've been there um, in the past, mm -hmm. you said you met a lot of incredible people, people that you follow. I mean, who do you actually follow? Who do you look up to? Can you uh, tell us some names that you really inspire you and you think they're doing great work on social media and using their platforms? I think one of the most remarkable women I've met in my journey um, as a Forbes journalist would be Uche Pedro. Um, Uche Pedro is the founder of Bella Niger. Um, she, um, she uses her digital platform to really elevate exceptional people, celebrate our stories, embrace um, African culture, and really pushes individual creatives, businesses, and really just Africans that are trying their best to be the best they can. And she's someone who I follow, um, but through her works as a wife, as a mother, the little windows of, that I see in her posts and the few times we've interacted, um, her work really inspires me hugely. Um, she was one of the first women that I interviewed for Against All Odds, which is the Forbes Africa show. And she really 
um, has built a platform from scratch that really helps Africans get that global awareness. And she's consistent about it. She's been a big support in my journey, but I've watched her do it for so many other artists. Um, also, um, someone who just last week really blew me away um, was um, a huge, huge global musician called David O. Um, and he really used his social media platform in an incredible way where he just announced he wanted people to donate for his birthday and posted his account details. And being the super mega star that he is, he managed to raise nearly $400,000 and then decided to donate it to orphanages across Nigeria. And he only announced that yesterday, but that left a huge impact on me and just really showed me the power of using social media for good. Um, Another really remarkable woman um, that I personally see as a mentor and a, a very beautiful mother figure in my life for my time that I was in Nigeria is Madame Folawan Shala Kija, um, where she is an exceptional entrepreneur, extremely hardworking, and she makes a valiant effort to connect with young women um, through creating a platform for women, Flourish Africa, where she really celebrates young women that are trying to impact and create change and gives them guidance and advice in all aspects of life using her personal brand power and her personal money to invest and impact young women and she's been running it for nearly five years or four years i believe um but looking at someone of that stature and how much impact she's been able to make really really amazes and inspires me um there's so many women. I, I there's so many women. I, I would be here for like four more hours. Um, no, I think that's 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 beautiful. That's wonderful because I think it's always nice to hear from people who are already so influential themselves. You know who who they look up to and um, who do they follow or yeah. Um, who um okay. Speaking of influence, speaking of success, if you have to say like few words or or maybe even a quote or a line that you say to everybody that you meet these all these young entrepreneurs that are starting to start their businesses so in your nonprofit the aim higher what is the quote or line that you always go to or use um to I think inspire my, and 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 to my, encourage or um that you just so you you love you go by in life I think my favorite line is trust the process. Um, and I always say trust the process, um, embrace the journey, trust the process, because a lot of the things that I post are actually for myself. <laughs> They're just moments of thoughts where I don't feel okay, or um, I really feel like crap. So I'm going to post myself not looking like crap so I can remind myself that it's possible to get out of this funk. Um, but most importantly, I, I try to remind myself with every post, just trust the process because um, nobody's perfect. Everyone is on a journey to bettering and discovering their best selves. We've not been here before. We've not lived this life before. And I feel that sometimes, especially in this digital age, there's so much pressure to have it all figured out when none of us do, especially me. Um, and I kind of, I've moved from one continent to a continent that um, I wasn't familiar with. I've moved from Ghana to Nigeria before. I've, I've really forced change in my life. And while I'm trying to get myself situated, I've met so many incredible people, but I've also met people that probably weren't, didn't have the best interests for me. And I've had to go through that process in all the highs and lows, knowing that as long as I'm alive, God definitely has a plan for me and I need to trust the process and embrace the process and know that all will turn out for my greater good, whether it's according to what I want or what it's, where, whether it plays out according to what God wants for me. Um, but yeah, I think trust the process, those three words has been my mantra from the very beginning because I didn't have a huge um, super plan or I'm going to take over the world type mentality. I just kind of wanting to see what happens if I gave this a try and I didn't give up. And it's brought me to some of the most incredible rooms, um, some of the most incredible opportunities. And more importantly, it's given me the opportunity to discover myself. Um, and as I learn more about my life, my, my, who I'm becoming, um, 
I'm just really grateful for the journey and realize that I, I really have no expectations at this point, but I, I can't lose as long as God's in it and as long as I'm focused and honoring um, the people that are dearest to me, then I believe that all will be well. And that's what I believe, trust the process. I think that really in the good, in the bad, it will always work out exactly how it's supposed to. And yeah, be happy in all situations. I love that. You studied psychology. Yes, I have. Do you feel like that really has helped you on this journey and trusting the process? And I mean, having the tools because you, you, you understand people really well. You, I guess, know how what makes them tick or, or not. Do you feel like that was a huge advantage in being in the media no. that has helped? <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing. It, it didn't prepare you for it. You feel like no? no. I mean, for me, I think. One of the biggest difficulties is um, a lot of people meet you and because of the things you're doing, it, it does look like you kind of have some sort of book that you know how to navigate this thing called life, but it's not the case. Um, I, I don't know what I'm doing 90% of the time. And if I didn't have um, my rock, if I didn't have um, some of the most amazing people holding my hand, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be anything close to this because um, really psychology is a brilliant opportunity to develop skills, um, to develop an ability to manage your time. And I think education is key in terms of building skills to create organized plans for what you want to do and um, strategize. And But it's a lot of theory and real life requires a very high level of emo emotional intelligence. And even if you figure out one person, every human being is totally different from the person you've met before. And you can never be exactly perfect for everyone. So you just have to kind of figure it out and you're gonna make mistakes. You're gonna get it wrong. You're gonna to have to also learn yourself. And I think psychology is a really great foundation to teach yourself to be self-aware, but especially on a journey I feel personally like this where um, it's quite an aggressive trajectory. You don't really have a lot of time to always gauge your surroundings because you're constantly meeting a new version of you as you um, grow. So I've had to spend a lot of time just kind of reflecting and meeting new layers of myself as I go through each experience, each opportunity. And um, if I can catch my breath trying to even be still the same piece for the people around me. I think one of the biggest difficulties with psychology is you feel like you have it all figured out until it throws you into the real world of real people. And um, relationships, especially for me, has suffered in this journey because so many people I know love the old version of peace where she was either a teacher or she was a really great journalist. And it's a bit hard to try and navigate the change and your schedules and the requirements that your work and your businesses need from you while maintaining that same familiarity that people are comfortable with. Um, and so you get to a point where you just kind of have to zone out and say, look, I just need to trust the process and do the best I can and really try and show up the best I can for myself. And then by default, hope that process of learning and growing has a positive impact to people around me. How did you do that, girl? Wait, have you been working on the filters? I don't know. I was oh, just like, oh my God, because I was like, I, my light is so bad. And I was like, what is this? Oh, this oh. is a filter. This is kind of funky. So sorry. I didn't want to. I, I didn't want to. <laughs> I, I'm looking like you guys. I was like, what is this? Oh, this is good. This is good. This is good. Oh, wait, wait, you're a Polaroid. Oh, is that good? <laughs> oh, but it's made sorry. you dumb. Sorry, this is what well, I mean. Is there? Oh my god! Okay, well now we're doing this. Is this is ah? This is, wait, how do you do that? Oh, <laughs> we should have a conversation <laughs> like this piece right now. So, Piz, let me tell you, I think you're fabulous. More fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this is this is kind of oh, cute. This is funny. Oh my. <laughs> okay, okay, this is oh, good. God. oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! This is hysterical. I love it. We had a little moment of like something funny, right? Um, you know, we got to laugh. Um, you know, speaking of social media, obviously it's, as we both know, there's so much power in it, right? It gives people voice. People, no matter where they are in the world, you can be in a small village and you can have a voice. You can, you can be someone 
um, meaning of someone that, you know, people can see you if you have some sort of vision, you have something to say, or you love a certain art, or you, you know, want to be a makeup artist and you want to showcase the way you do your makeup. Um, I think, you know, it's really incredible, but it does come with a lot of, I feel like responsibility. And, you know, obviously you know that and you are very aware and you utilizing all your power to inspire, to uplift, um, and to help give people purpose, give them jobs, uh, which I, I love, uh, you know, everything you've been doing in, in Ghana. I mean, you've worked with a lot of young, smart, inspiring people from Ghana and, um, and you've helped to create a lot of businesses. Maybe can you share like one story that really touched you that or you feel like it's so incredible that you're so proud of um, and a little bit tell us like the process, like, you know, when you met them, where, where they're at and then how, you know, where they're at now and who they are. Um, we would um, love I to know and hear. Well, oh, actually, a, a story that was extremely dear to me. Um, when Aim High Africa started, um, the whole goal was really to equalize the opportunities. As a teacher from the UK, I saw that so many people had opportunities to change their future, including myself, through the power of education and awareness and exposure to experiences and opportunities that you wouldn't normally have. And I felt that when I was in Ghana, seeing people in underprivileged situations, I thought I can change the world with my savings. So I thought, look, let me start Aim High Africa and start investing in entrepreneurs. And it really backfired because I had no real plan. Um, I did just jump in and I kind of hit rock bottom where I ended up investing all my finances in helping people around me and I had nothing left. Um, and it was just at that point where my media career started taking off. I, I went to a audition um, and I genuinely did not have one penny to get a cab to my audition. And I thought, okay, um, I really want to get this TV show opportunity. Let me try and get to this meeting. I went outside and I saw a taxi driver with a really, really run down cab. And I just said, look, um, I have a really important um, meeting that could give me the big opportunity of a lifetime. And I really want you to just believe in me and take me for free. <laughs> Even though I have this accent, don't get confused. I've literally made really bad investments and I need your help. And this gentleman um, drove me to my audition. bikes and he's own he's building his second house um he's now married with two children so his whole life has really turned around and honestly it was just because he chose to be kind and help me and support me and be consistent and more importantly genuine about it and by default i feel that his kindness and that community kind of spirit really helped change not only the trajectory of his life but also give me 
um, the career of my dreams, but also inspire myself to use that model to then create a community of people. Aim High Africa now is it on about 6,700 or something entrepreneurs in different industries from people who are selling credits to people who are doing um, services like shopping and um, to people who are teaching in schools now, to trainers in our institutions. Um, there's so many people in the ecosystem now that are benefiting, some that have left us because they've reached their goal and some people that have referred more people and certain communities as well that are being um, transformed through that community spirit. So really, I think he would be the first person that I would always go to because really it came from just two people helping each other out and supporting each other. And no one really knew, including social media, that I really didn't have two cobble to rub together, but he did. And he never ever let me miss a step until I was able to get back on my feet. And I feel that it was that act of kindness and genuine support that actually gave me the inspiration to say, well, if this is what one person believing in me, a stranger supporting me could do, what will happen if you build a community of people like that? And that's what Aim High has grown to be over the years. And it's also a reminder when you give, you always get. 100%. It's really I, something that I tell my children, you always give and don't worry about getting back because we'll always come back to you. When it yeah. comes from a kind, beautiful place, they will always come back even bigger and more. So yeah. if you guys are listening, please remember, give, don't, yeah. don't be like, oh, but I don't want to give, I don't have. And even if you don't have much, if you always give you, and always be kind to everybody on your way up, because yeah. those are the people you will meet on your way down, because there'll be those moments when you will be down, because life, it's like the ocean. You know, life isn't just always like this, right? Life, it's like the wave. It's yeah. high, it's low, it's high and yeah. it's low. Um, you know, we're, I mean, unless you're a maybe machine, even a machine can <laughs> keep, you know, being on a high speed, it gets overheated and then it like needs to cool off or it will shut up because it's so hot, right? Like our gadgets, our computers. So um, I'm a big believer in that. And, you know, I do have three kids and it's something I, I inject in them all the time. And I talk about that. Um, kindness little... comes a long way. Sorry? That's how do you have three children and it looks like I carried them? You're like, no, what are you talking about? Stop it. Stop it. No, 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 no. You're, you don't. You're beautiful. I cannot stop looking at you. Those cheekbones and everything. Your beautiful smile. Uh, you're, you're beautiful. And you're, you know, you're so inspiring. I, I love this story. Uh, it's a really beautiful and inspiring story. So again, you've done so much. You're very ambitious, you're very inspiring, you're very powerful, you're already very successful. I mean, somebody could say, peace, you've had it, you know, you have it all, you know, you must be done, right? You're, you're, you're kind of in a good place, you've achieved a lot. Um, but I feel like this woman, there's a lot more, I can see it in, in your eyes, you know, that fire is flaming. What is, what are more dreams, like something like, that you would love to do and achieve in professional. I know you're all personal. What is piece that really like right now it's inspiring you and really, Oh, I would love to do that. Like, or I, when I was a little girl, that was always my dream, you know, to do or create what it would be. Honestly. Um, I feel that I kind of, the, every dream I've, I've had, um, I think God has put me in a position where it's, he's exceeded what I, I, I originally had planned. Um, so in terms of um, where I'm at in my life, I think I'm in a, just a place of just peace. Um, not, as much as um, I think on the outside, it looks like, oh, you're doing all these things. I think there's still a lot of growing to do. I think there's still a lot of finding myself to do. Um, I think there's a, a element of balance that I would like to start creating um, because I'm- Would you like to start a family? Is that what you hinting? Um, Settling down and, you know, maybe, no? I don't- Is that you know, <laughs> Do you know what? I, I truly believe that I have to be intentional and it's an intentional decision that you have to make as a woman. Um, but I think that for me, I think I've learned to just 
kind of take a sing each step at a time. And I feel that before I even start thinking about family and marriage and those type of things, I really want to make sure that I'm the best I can be for my immediate family and friends and um, my relationship. I think that it's important for me to be the best I can be for them and be a source of joy and inspiration to them as well. Because um, being so, you know, uh, being such a workaholic and being extremely passionate about all these amazing things that I've had the opportunity to do in my career, um, unfortunately, some things will fall by the wayside. You can't be 100% all the time. And so for me, I think it's important, like I was saying, to be, spend some time with my mother, spend some time with my partner, spend some time with my friends, and really be in a position where I can be the best I can also be for them. Um, because you can't build it all. And sometimes building the best career in the world will give you so many amazing accolades, but you have a lot of inner work as well that you need to develop because um, those journeys and those rooms always question you. And then you have another group of people that are used to the piece that is just the joker, who's a bit crazy and just fun. And, um, you know, you have to now try and bring them value as well. And you can't do it all. And if you are able to do it all, please, you know, write a book and let me read it because I don't know how people can do it. Um, well, you, you seem like you're doing, you're doing really pretty good job at it yourself. You can definitely share some of your you know your tips um but i agree you know it's something yeah. always gonna give like you know it's it's how are you, how are you doing it i can kind of you know I, i've learned and again i'm very like you i'm a high achiever i like to be the best in what i do again i'm a perfectionist as i said before but i think being in the business that i'm in i've been in it 23 years and you know you mature you know, you mature, you, you, you realize what is really important. And of course, work is incredible and all that. And I've had that, you know, before I had a partner and like a serious relationship being married before I had children, you know, I've done all that. I've worked, I traveled, I, 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 I was in, in, in incredible places. I've done incredible things. But then you get to a point where you want, you don't want to just be living out of a suitcase. You know, you want to have a home you know, your sanctuary, you want to spend quality time with your partner, your family and kind of, you know, still give yourself because that's what we, we do. And, you know, we love to give and take care, but also like, keep to yourself and keep yeah. that, you know, sacred space for yourself and not to be always out there and with people because we're givers and it does take a lot of energy, whether you're in person or on, on the, you know, social channels, it takes energy. It, it does take time away from you and your life and you're that sacred, right? That rock, that root. Um, so I think it's important to take that time and a minute to really connect with that, you know, with yourself, take care of yourself and be quiet or with your family. Uh, I, and really for me, I mean, children really help to bring that perspective, that balance, right? Because it's not, they, they don't know what you do. They don't care. Oh, have you done this and that? Or do you look like that? You know, they don't care. They're like, they'll tell you. Like, I, I remember I was going um, to a, like a charity event the other day and I don't really wear makeup, you know, around my kids during the day. If I, you know, un unless I'm at work, I'd love to play and dress up. But in my everyday life, I really don't put so much. So the makeup artist put like lashes and like black smoky eye around my <laughs> eye. My hair was like, styled and my six year old six year old went mom are you going to a halloween party oh. i was like i was like you know what actually i am you know what am i gonna tell him well it's actually i'm going to a, a charity dinner um yeah. but yeah you think i look like i'm going to halloween because i guess i look so funny you know but it's endearing it's funny it's cute like we need that we need the you know to like have somebody who's gonna break it for us and you know that doesn't think like oh you are this or that no you are you are my mom and you yeah. look funny right now you know <laughs> you might be wearing i don't know some incredible designer and the most incredible makeup artists have done your makeup but you look funny to me you look like you're going to halloween so i think it's incredible and i love it it, it keeps it exciting and um 
Um, so I, I, I definitely, you know, I, I encourage having children. It's special. It's incredible. They, they feed you with so much. They give you so much and they give you so much purpose. You know, you then realize what, what you do things for and why you do it. And, uh, and, and it also helps to like help you to really be the best version of yourself and also to learn more about yourself because they really pick up things that you do and you can see it because you see it. Oh, why are they doing this? Why are they talking like this? I don't like it. And mm -hmm. oh, I like it. And you know, yeah. they're picking it from you and your husband. Oh, you know, your people. So people around you. So you realize, well, who I surround myself, it's so important because that's really going to inspire them. Right. So like, I, again, that's another important thing. I think people, whether you're in business or in life and you want positive changes, you want to grow, yeah. really think about who you in, surround yourself with. Because yeah. if you surround yourself with beautiful, encouraging, empowering, smart or funny like people that really encourage you and cheer you on, it's important because if you have people who are not, or they're negative or they're constantly complaining or, you know, they're being the best influence, it will influence how you feel and how you do things. And if you have children, that will influence them too. So I think it's a really important thing, even for our kids, you know, who they surround themselves with. It's, you know, or as a parent helping them to navigate that, um, you know, they're not always going to make the perfect decisions. Obviously their kids, they have to learn like we, we do too every day, you know, and we are more mature and we've lived longer. We're, we're more tools, but mm -hmm. we still, you know, need to be reminded of that too. And, and so, um, I definitely see you, you will be an incredible mom. I know you have a lot of children in your organization <laughs> that you take care of. You have 6,000 <laughs> children, actually. That's I'm, not, I'm convinced that you jumped on a phone call to my mom. Because the direction we're going in sounds like you've had the Sunday morning call. Please, when are you getting married, eh? When are the children coming, eh? <laughs> you sound like you got a quick call with her before you, you, we jumped on this. Let me know. Me now, me, you know, we, we talked. Yeah. I dealt like... UK before I child Ghana. I was getting, you know, I, I was doing research on you, you know, what we, what we can talk about that to make it interesting and, and special. No, but I know there's a time and place for everything. You have to obviously be ready. As you said, you have to feel it. And you do have a lot of incredible people that you are responsible of and for. You're inspiring. You're beautiful. You're smart. I cannot wait to see more of Peace High. I cannot wait to see the Netflix show. Uh, remind us, what is it called again? Young, Famous, and African. Uh, everybody, let's let's watch early next year 2022 i want to say thank you so much for your time i i feel like we've covered a lot there was so much more to cover uh but we can do this maybe another time more get into yeah. other things um, my invitation to check because yes come to check with naomi with your mom i cannot wait to meet her we can talk more about family and little bambinos <laughs> And uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you guys for watching. This is Social Awards Talks. We'll try to do this every month. Talk to an incredible person somewhere around the globe. So if you want me to talk to somebody special, please DM me or DM Social Awards on Instagram who you want to hear from or what do you want to talk about because we want to provide the MB book platform for you to, to hear and ask and all and, and above. Peace, have a beautiful Sunday. Go thank do you. your incredible work and thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. You are absolutely amazing to talk to. I felt like I was talking to my friend and then I realized that it's on Instagram and it's recorded. But um, yeah, thank you. I had a really lovely time talking to you, Carolina. You're amazing. You're amazing and you're beautiful. Keep smiling, keep shining and happy Sunday. <laughs> bye bye.